geographical distribution of corals. So one uh, thing that we should remember, this image I thought says it all. How are the corals geographically distributed? So I take this 30 degree north and I take this 30 degree south. Yeah, I draw a line. Oh, sorry, the line is not straight. Something like this, yeah. 30 degree north and 30 degree south. So you see that 90, 95% of 95% uh, of your uh, coral reefs are in the tropical zone. Are in the tropical zone. They are in the tropical zone. And as you can see, one ocean which clearly seems to have a lot of coral reefs is Pacific. Yeah, followed by Indian Ocean. The way I look at it is, Atlantic seems to have relatively less coral reefs, as it appears from the map. It seems to have relatively less. Coral reef. So if you look at it, look at it, you have coral reefs starting from here, at least starting from here, then you have Lakshadweep Island, then you have Maldives all the way here, then you have Sri Lanka, coral reefs over here. In and around Andaman and Nicobar Islands, you have coral reefs. You have some uh, Chagos Islands, Michels, all of it come here. Then you have some heavy coral reefs around Philippines and the South China Sea. A lot of coral reefs, yeah, this one, this thick one is your Great Barrier Reef, eastern part of Australia, and your entire Oceania. There are too many things for me to really say which one is. So all your Caledonia, Fiji, Tuvalu, Kiribati, all of it comes here. So, so as you can see, even if you look at Pacific, the western part of Pacific, yeah, if I were to divide Pacific like this, the western part of Pacific seems to have a lot of coral reefs. And the Indian Ocean also has a lot of coral reefs. So you have this Gulf of Aden, you have the Red Sea, you have the eastern coast of Africa. And this place is your Caribbean. Caribbean, once again, not the full part, maybe somewhere here. This is your Caribbean. And the coral reefs start from Florida itself. Now Florida state of US starts. And then some coral reefs on the eastern past. So you have some uh, coral reefs here. In fact, this is that. Uh, uh, the island where Darwin did his, uh, I forgot the island name, please happen. Don't do it. Someone help me with the island name. What was the island name? Where he found this laws of uh, uh, natural selection. Galapagos, thank you. Yeah, Galapagos Island. And uh, so, so pretty much it's clear. That's the spatial distribution of coral reefs. Latitude wise, it's very clear that they are between 30 degrees north to 30 degrees south. And longitude wise, you can see that a lot of it is on the eastern hemisphere, so to say. Yeah, I'll, yeah, you're right. Also, a lot of it is on the eastern hemisphere, primarily in the western Pacific Ocean. Okay. Now, what to, uh, one thing I want uh, to say because sometimes UPSC questions. Uh, are based on exceptions rather than the general rule. So if it says that corals are never found in deep water, the answer is wrong. They are also deep water corals in the colder region, but that's more of an exception. Whenever you have an extreme statement, I think you know that this is some of the basic statement. But whenever you have an extreme statement, generally you have to be a little bit cautious. Sometimes the extreme statement could be true also. But when it comes to coral reefs, majority of them are in this latitude, in shallow water, why in shallow water? Because only if it is in shallow water can the, uh, the zooxanthellae can, can survive. And once it survives, it does photosynthesis, it makes sugar which can be used by the coral. And therefore, the symbiotic relationship. But it so happens that there are certain corals which do not have symbiotic relationship. I did not want to go into so much detail because it was an experiment. But I thought you should know as an aspirant that there are some coral reefs which are there in the deep water. Okay, so that is on the coral reef. What are all the things that impact them? All of that is mentioned here. <clears throat> One second. <laughs>
it was there. I don't know where did I miss it. But anyway, no problem. The sound is not there. Thank you, guys. <clears throat> Importance of coral reefs. I think uh, this you can read by yourself. Yeah, there is not much we talked about wave action, tropical storms, tsunami, all of that talk. Shelter for marine organisms. Twenty-five percent of the marine species is there in point one percent. A source for nitrogen. They help in nutrient recycling and all. Yeah, I think this is uh, something we don't want to discuss. Yeah, one thing that we should discuss is what is this coral bleaching? I saw this nice picture. The U.S. government's. Uh, Oceanography website. I thought you know this kind of really makes it very simple. When the temperature of the water increases, one of the reasons when the temperature of water increases, the coral reefs, that is the polyps, which is the living being, they are sensitive to temperature fluctuations. That's point number one. Point number two, we also know that when the temperature increases. The dissolved oxygen is reduced. Do you agree? Long back we studied. When the temperature increases, the dissolved oxygen comes down. Both of this put together stresses the polyps and the corals, and the first instant reaction is to eject the blue sand. Today. So what do they do when they are under temperature stress? What do they do? They eject the blue sand. Today. Yeah. So this is one part. So the moment the blue sand is Who gave the color to the coral? It was the blue sand. The moment it is ejected, the color of the coral is also lost. But then the color alone is not lost because we just studied at the start of coral reefs is that both of them have a symbiotic relationship. So if one is taken out of the equation, the other's survival is at risk. Okay, so which may result in faster death of the polyps. So one is the coral themselves eject the blue sand. Okay? The second part is, if the water temperature increases, it has been found that the blue sand concentration itself comes down. Okay, so either case, what is happening is that the blue sand gets dissociated from its host polyps, and the symbiotic relationship is broken. The moment symbiotic relationship is broken, we all understand that neither of them can survive for a longer. At the very basic, this is what bleaching essentially means at the microscopic level. Okay, so this is given in three uh, stages, which I thought is easy for you to understand. And at the right, the reddish one, you see the reasons: changes in temperature, uh, temperature of the ocean, runoff and pollution, overexposure to sunlight. By the way, this is also very important. Now, while I have touched upon the ocean temperature. Um, Uh, over exposure to sunlight. If sunlight becomes more intense, that also results in uh, the bleaching of the corals, which are which are at a very very shallow water, which means the sunlight really penetrates them and hits them hard. Okay, so that's the over exposure to sunlight. Extremely low tides. When the tide goes extremely lower, what is happening? The coral, which is at a higher depth, it almost faces this condition. It comes up a little bit you know, because the tide uh, has gone low. Which means the coral, which was at a much deeper position, now is at a lesser deeper position. The moment it is at a lesser deeper position, the exposure to sunlight is 